I've come up with over a hundred different books that you can make just from paper and a pair of scissors. And we're gonna make three this afternoon. So would you take one of the sheets of paper that you've got in front of you, please? And we'll have that in front of us in the landscape position. We're gonna fold this down to eight rectangles. I call this the magic eight rectangles because most of those hundred books you make from different ways of folding and cutting these eight rectangles. Let's fold this sheet in half vertically, please, like this. Now I'm going to demonstrate it holding it up like this, as you will do with your class. But when we come to folding it, we need to do that on the tabletop in front of us to get a nice sharp crease, and then to use the scissor handle to sharpen that crease, please. We now then have an A5 landscape in front of us, and we're going to fold that in half as well. So making the corners carefully touch on the tabletop, folding down the crease, sharpening the crease, and making sure when we lay the scissors down, the point is facing away from us. We then open what is like a birthday card. And we're going to fold the top edge down to the bottom edge there like this, lay that down on the tabletop, fold the crease, sharpen the crease with the scissor handle. We've got this, and then we've got, when we open the sheet, the magic eight rectangles. The first book I'm going to make of you, I call an origami book, although really it's not an origami book at all. So to do this, we want to fold the paper in half, the first crease you made. And I would say to the class, rub your finger on the folded edge so we know where the folded edge is. This is the open bit here. I know it sounds pretty obvious, but you will know you've got to teach these skills. This is the folded edge. We're going to lay the folded edge against our tummy. So the folded edge against my tummy here, and I'm going to lay the scissors on that middle crease, folded edge, middle crease, and then we're going to cut to the middle horizontal crease there. You must go right to that to horizontal point there. Then open the whole sheet, fold the top half over the bottom half, and then automatically we should find a cube forming when we start to push the left and the right side. If that doesn't happen, just turn the whole thing around the other way and you'll find it will actually go to a cube. Now I'm going to push the cube to a star shape there or cross, and then I'm going to just fold down those pages and we have the six pages of the little origami book. Here it is at uh, year two by Lisa. It's Lisa's best friend. She's done a different friend you see on each of the pages there. This has then been opened to A3. It's been laid on a a school uh, photocopier, it's been reduced down. And so here we have an A4 edition of the book. Now this is the only kind of thing you can do from single sheets of paper. You can't do this as an exercise book. So here we have then Lisa's original and her little then edition of one. Let's bring that down to year one. Half the size of that one is this little book of shapes. Look at these beautiful little shapes, all, all title, hexagons, triangles, and so on there. We come back to a, um, a three size, and we have pesto, highlights of a summer holiday. And just look at the sheer joy of this. I mean, the decorative border, the way the writing has been arranged with the illustrations, a real, I mean, this is a real visual experience, and you can sense the child's enthusiasm for making that. Year six, we have a little book about um, butterflies. So the top half of the page is writing about that particular species and then the illustrations underneath. And then uh, finally, I'm going to show you, I love this one. It's called Journeys. It's by Sarah. She was 10 when she made this. And this is an A2 sheet of paper folded down to those same eight rectangles to make the origami book. And just let me turn the pages so you can see, oh, Oh, she must have loved this. Now she's got the original. Everything I'm showing you is actually photocopies because I cannot prize these books out of children and naturally enough. The second book that we're going to make, could you take another sheet of A4, please? And we're going to make the magic eight rectangles. So would you fold in half with that first crease, the first vertical crease like this? We don't fold it in half holding it up. We lay it on the tabletop. We take the scissor handle and we sharpen the crease. And then we hold it again to the new uh, landscape, A5. We fold that vertically in half. Again, we do the 
Corner to corner, touching, folding the halfway, sharpen the crease with the handle of the scissors. And we have like a little birthday card there. And then we fold the top down to the bottom. So we've got our magic eight rectangles. We open the whole sheet and we have it in the vertical position. We're going to cut three of the middle, uh, the, the long middle crease cut three of those panels. So I'm going to go one and two and three. Now, of course, many children will cut right the way through. So have some masking tape ready just to join the final top one together. We're going to fold the final crease in half. Now, what should happen is that there's a flap on the left and a flap on the right. They should start to make zigzags. You see, like a letter W there. If it doesn't actually do that, just turn the whole of this inside out and you'll find it will more easily go to a zigzag on, on that side. There's the W there. And then on the other side, likewise, we fold that to a zigzag. So we have a zigzag left and a zigzag right. And when we hold it, do you see it looks like a, like a frog? And I say to children, hold up your dancing frog. That's the pages of the book. We lay that on one side. We take another sheet of paper to make the covers. This one starts by folding the paper in half. The long way, folding in half, the long way. Corner to corner, carefully touching, sharpening the crease with the scissor handle. And now we're going to put a spine in the middle of this, uh, this cover. How are we going to do that without measuring? Because none of my books have any measuring. Well, we do it like this. We put our little finger on one edge, and then we take the other edge, and we crease that over to touching our little finger on the other side. So I'm going to do that on the tabletop. So little finger on one side, we crease the other side to touching our little finger. We then open this back, do the same thing around the other way. So the little finger now goes on the other edge here, and then we crease this far edge over to touch our little finger on the other side. Crease the paper down. And then, hey presto, wow, we've got a spine in the middle of our cover. And if you're making a smaller book, of course you need less than your little finger. If you're say making an A, um, a three size book when you do say your index finger and you use your thumb if you're using a two size paper. Now, the covers are too big, so we've got to fold in the left and the right side. Now, we're not going to go right up to the spine crease, that makes the covers too small. We're going to have the same little finger width before we get to the spine on one side, creasing that down on the tabletop, creasing that in. Finger, little finger width gap between the spine and the edge, and then repeat that to the other side, creasing over to within a little finger width of the other side there. And there we've got our cover finished. The last stage is then to fit the dancing frog, the pages, into the cover of the book. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the, the book with the inside facing upwards. I'm going to have the creases. Um, nearest to my tummy as I'm going to have the crease on the dancing frog near, nearest to my tummy here. And I'm going to put my finger in here and open up this little pocket, this little pocket on the side. This is the, the folded in section opened up. And I'm going to put like the foot of the frog in on that side, do the same thing to the other side, just slot the foot of the frog into the other side as there. And then it's like I'm going to push mine in there and there, into there like this, fold it over, and then we just push the pages down into the middle, head goes down into the folded down book, fold it all down, and there is our six page book with a detached cover. Let's have, um, have a look at that. Um, first of all, with Mrs. Wigglewaggle, this is a nine year old storybook. This is your book you've just made, but this is on A3 size paper. Beautifully designed. Look at the sheer kind of professionalism with this work. I mean, it looks so beautiful, doesn't it? The illustrations and the writing, so holistic, and the cover design, so beautiful piece of work. Half that size, we come down to a year one book, 
And this is a family portrait. So it's a member of my family on each of the pages inside there. And half that size, that's a piece of A5 paper folded down. We have this little beauty here. And look what the difference just using um, colored paper can make uh, to the paper there, to the presentation book here. And half, it is, half a size again here, it is down an A6 tiny little book here with a one sentence story in there. And then I'm going to show it to you. It's a long-term project, year six, we're working on A2 size paper now. And now we're really getting into the heavy stuff now, aren't we here? This is like a 10, 15 hour project, three hours a week. And we're looking at uh, South America, different aspects of South America, and even things like drop down pages like this, which is a page of, of, of uh, crafts of, of South America. With this book, I've joined two of those uh, dancing frogs together to give extra pages. So you can see the sheer variety of subject, of a duration to a period of time. You might want to have a little short term uh, book, which only lasts for a few minutes. You might want to make another project, risk it on, on for an afternoon or two afternoons or a half a term at mornings. The sheer variety of possibilities here are absolutely endless. We're going to come on now to our third book, and it's going to be a pop-up book. So let's take another sheet of A4, please, and we're going to make the magic eight rectangle. So we start by folding in half, making sure the corners touch on the tabletop, fold down the crease, scissor handle, sharpen the crease, lay the scissors down, making sure the point is facing away from us. We have a new A, uh, A5 landscape. We fold that in half to making our birthday card corners carefully touch. Fold down the halfway crease. There's our birthday. If I had time, I would show you a dozen different wonderful approaches to writing a story in just a greeting card. But for now, we'll carry on to our pop up book. So we're going to fold the top edge down to the bottom edge there. Make the corners carefully touch, fold down the halfway, sharpen it with our scissor handle, and we have the magic eight rectangles. So we're going to fold this sheet in half, the vertical crease. And I'm going to draw on the top panel on the folded side, that must be on the folded side, a rainbow. There is my rainbow on the folded edge top panel. Notice that it doesn't go right up to the vertical crease. That would kind of spoil the effect, really, if it goes right to that point. But it must go to the horizontal crease here. And I say to the class, OK, have the rainbow touching your tummy there. And now hold your scissors in your hand. Everybody watching, everybody watching around the classroom. Have the scissors ready, ready. Are you all ready? Ready now. We're going to make the paper view the moving and the scissors stay still. There's the scissors. And I'm going to make the paper do the moving. There. And you must cut down to the halfway point. We open the whole sheet. And we fold the top half over the bottom half. And children are absolutely astonished when they find they've got a circle in front of them. Now, you could, uh, of course, do a project solely using this design here. It's a lovely little piece of artwork in the middle and then the writing on the sides. But we're making this into a pop up book. So I'm going to fold it in half. <laughs> There's the rainbow rising up in the top half of the book form. And I'm going to fold it forwards on the horizontal crease. Now you can't make a pop-up on a horizontal crease. It has to be at an angle. So look what I'm going to do. I'm going to slightly crease that down. Let me repeat that. There it is, horizontal. There it is with the slight crease down there. It can be a big crease, just a slight one. And then I'm going to reverse crease on the other side. That will help it pop up. Reverse the crease on the other side. Bring that back up vertically again. And then we're going to have to make this, this rainbow go inside the, the, the base of the book. So I'm just going to slightly, you see, slightly close that, and I'm going to drop it down into the base of the book here like this. You see that slanting down angle? It's got to be there. And when we open it, there it is, popping up and down. And the class will go crazy at this point, believe you me. They're absolutely wild 
about this. But you've got to be careful, they don't pull it too hard because they're just going to tear the paper. I'm going to show you just one example of children's uh, work here. And it is a history project year four. It's uh, on Tutankhamun. There he is popping up, uh, up and down in the middle of this A3 size book here. And then there's writing on the side panels about how um, <clears throat> it was discovered in the 1920s. Now, the, this one, I, I cut the, the side panels so they can open so we have extra pages of writing if you need them on the side panels. Now, I'll just very, very briefly illustrate that. So here we have your, here's, 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 your, here's the book you've made. Now, in the, in the front panel, it's like a hole in the middle. And I'm going to take the scissors and I'm going to cut up the first crease. Now, this is only on the outside edge, because if you do that, of course, on both pieces, you're going to cut the whole sheet in half. Cut up here and on the far side there. And then I can have two extra, extra pages there for writing if you want them to go there. You know, I've had a wonderful 30 years. Of, I'm in my 80s now. I'm, I don't travel around the world anymore. I do workshops still in the UK. But, I mean, the, the sheer thrill and excitement that I've experienced, I'm so lucky. It's been so life-enhancing to watch children produce these books. And the excitement and the joy and the thrill of fold, 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 cut, 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 and wham, 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 you get something absolutely wonderful. But you can write a little story in there, and you can give that to Granny when you get home later that evening. One thing every child will say to you when they've made one of these books, and I guarantee this, when can we take them home? Thank you.